Good morning, everyone, and welcome to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. I am located at 1563 Main Street here in Peckville, and I am with you every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. on these stations to bring landowners valuable information that the landowner needs regarding natural gas development here in Pennsylvania. At the Clark Law Firm, my focus is on land owner representation not pipeline companies not gas companies but landowner representation i have not ever represented a gas or pipeline company and i never will i am here to help you and assist the landowner at the clark law firm my focus and what i've done in the past is i've represented literally hundreds of landowners in oil and gas lease negotiations all across the state of Pennsylvania. And I say this often with pipeline right-of-way agreements. I have represented landowners, hundreds of landowners, in negotiations with, I believe now, in excess of 50 different companies across the state of Pennsylvania. 50 different companies. And I say this because it gives you some perspective of many things. One, who are you listening to? <laughs> what is my experience? And also, it gives you the perspective as to what is actually going on out there. If there have been 50 different companies that I personally have dealt with in pipeline issues and negotiations, what does that tell you that's occurring out there? Thousands and thousands of miles of pipelines. And think about this too, these gas and pipeline companies are very experienced and they have very experienced lawyers and attorneys working for them you should too this show as you know if you listen all the time is not to be a giant commercial there are some certain commercial aspects to it but my point is when you're engaged in these negotiations or discussions you need to make sure that you're going to have the best possible representation for you, your property, because it's going to impact future generations in most cases. Also, and I, I've been working a lot on the website, I'm going to talk about that in a second, but also you need to understand that the company is not going to tell you the information that you need. Think about this. You go in to buy a car. You, know, you go in there, is the car salesman going to tell you what the best price is that they can give you? Are you going to believe that when you go into a negotiation with a company landman or a company representative or a company employee? Are they going to tell you and give you the highest amount that they can possibly give you as far as compensation? Are they also going to give you the best terms or language in the agreement that may be available? Think about those things. Whether it's me, whether it's some other attorney, you need experienced assistance in negotiating and before you sign any oil and gas related contract. Again, I've represented hundreds upon hundreds of landowners, so you're going to get some perspective from me based upon all of these, uh, it, all of this history which I have solely from the landowner side and not just dealing with one company but example in pipeline companies about 50 different companies gas companies all across the state and I continue to do you know I do contracts for so many different types of agreements but that's not all I do but contracts for roadway agreements that's another thing I was, as the development occurs okay we have different phases going on across the state we have some areas where still leasing is occurring and I've had several new clients over the past couple months in the western part of the state there's some active leasing going on have some clients right now with what we call top leasing where they're actually under lease but a company is coming in and offering them and in this case in some cases a different company some cases the same company a new lease you need to understand as a landowner why is this occurring and a lot of times the new lease has lower financial terms than your existing lease so initially landowners said well geez I don't want to sign that because right now maybe I'm getting 18 or 20 percent royalty is what's on my lease I'm not getting paid royalties yet but that's how high the royalty percentage is and this new lease is a lower percentage and 
given the fact that my old lease hasn't expired yet, why would I want to go ahead and sign a new lease at a lower compensation rate with respect to royalty percentage? Well, there may be reasons for that. And those are things that you need to understand and discuss because with an attorney who's experienced, who can give you this guidance, somebody that can give you the guidance from your side, not the company's side. The company land man represents the company. You need to understand because what happens is you may say, well, geez, this is garbage. I'm throwing this away. Why would I ever do this? Chase the land man away. I don't even want to talk to you. However, maybe give you a quick example maybe the current lease that you have is we'll may have some fun with these numbers and we'll say maybe it's 20 percent and the new lease that you're being offered is 18 percent and you still have six months or a year left on your old lease so you say get out of town uh, i'm not going to deal with this i have an old lease or i have a current lease it's valid and i'm not going to go ahead and sign a new lease for a lower amount well what you have to watch out for and this is case specific land owner specific. So this isn't specific advice for a person in any single case. What I'm saying, what I mean by that is, you need to look at your particular circumstances. And when this is the only time that you've dealt with this issue, it may be hard for you to judge and have the information that you need to know to make the right decision. So, although you have a 20% active lease for royalties and you're offered 18 percent maybe it is something that is ultimately in your best interest to go ahead and sign the new top lease maybe it's not but maybe it is and generally speaking there's no simple answer to that we need to look at your circumstances what is going on around you and a big part of this process is being able to identify what questions you need to ask and what information you need to look at what information you need to obtain and then once you get that information you need to be able to evaluate it properly and I'm gonna tell you that if you're dealing with this for the first time those are very difficult tasks for the landowner and quite simply the same thing as an attorney if this is the first time you've ever seen something like this, well, that's going to be very difficult for you as well. So over time, in experience from seeing development, seeing new leases, seeing top leases, we're always acquiring more information. We're always learning from every experience that we have and being able to offer the best assistance, learn to ask the right questions, learn how to get the right information, and then also understand and learn how to evaluate and process that information very very important so got a little off track there but it's an issue that I've been dealing with recently boy I probably have dealt with about 10 top leases in the last four to six months probably at least that I would say so it's something is going on a lot there's a lot of reasons for that that's not gonna be the topic of today's show but if you have a top lease you need to get an experienced attorney who can assist you. I am attorney Doug Clark. This is all things Marcellus. I'm here from eight to nine, excuse me, eight to nine every Sunday morning. And I've been doing this show since August of 2010, August of 2010. You can go to the website. Now I'm going to break apart here. I'm going to well, break apart. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to break away here and talk about the website for a minute. It is up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the new redesigned, revamped website is now up, and I really encourage everybody. It is a good resource to get you thinking. Check it out. There's a lot of great information. Go to pagasleaseattorney.com, pagasleaseattorney.com. Website is up. It's redesigned new a lot of new information up and available easier to use easier to review now i am working or we're working on updating all the radio shows and i mean i should say uploading all the radio shows and getting the radio shows up there for you to listen to but done a lot of new things really excited about and 
I've done what I'm doing too. I should take a step, another step back. Pretty soon I'll be <laughs> all the way back there. You can't hear me, but yeah, what I'm doing is I've taken these blogs and I'm working on these blogs. And of course, I'm busy with the clients and the work we do, but uh, really working on the websites because we want to get this information out to you. So there were a ton of blogs that I had written before, articles that I've written, and I'm going back because some of that information has become a little stale because of the evolution of the natural gas development. So I'm going back through, uh, reworking some. Some may not get posted up again. Some I'm reworking and revisiting and updating them so that they are providing you, the landowner, the best information available for the present time. So if you go to the website, make sure that you check out the blogs. They're gonna, I'm gonna keep doing these. I'm gonna try, now my goal is to get a new blog up every two weeks. Um, and the reality is uh, um, a more realistic goal is certainly to have a new blog up every month. And one of the things, too, with the new website, you can sign up for our newsletter. And what I'm going to do is when I put up a new blog, I'm going to just send something out and say, hey, we got a new blog up there. But I can tell you this. I get a lot of emails. I do a lot of work with emails. And one of the things that I don't like is getting a bunch of emails, getting bothered by all these emails, something I have to open up. Uh, I'm not going to do that. We're going to send you, if you sign up for the newsletter, you know, probably about once a month, sometimes maybe every couple months, maybe twice a month, but I even doubt that, but certainly not something like every week. Uh, we'll send out a newsletter, some information, say, hey, new blog up here, here's the topic, check it out. Uh, and do something along those lines. So if you're interested, you can sign up on the website. We're not going to send you a bunch of junk emails. Uh, you can sign up and you can be in the loop. And when something happens, we'll, we'll send out a newsletter and you can be a part of it. Again, it's pagasleaseattorney.com. And whether you want to sign up with a newsletter or not, go to pagasleaseattorney.com. Check out the new website. Again, a lot of quality information there. And you'll see. You know, the, you're going to see as you review the website, there's a lot of discussion and a lot of uh, leading into the fact that you need, as a landowner, an experienced oil and gas attorney to assist you in a lot of these issues. And obviously, I am an oil and gas attorney. However, I want to say this too. It gets you thinking. I really want to get you thinking because whether you call me or somebody else, you need to have this assistance. That is the, the most truthful thing uh, that I can say to you. That is just true. It's been shown time and time again. You need that assistance. Now, one of the other things, I'm going to kind of tease this into the next section now, I say you need certain, you need assistance. You need this oil and gas attorney. You need some assistance. One of the things that I'm seeing more and more uh, recently, and it's of course it's been going on for a while, but I'm seeing it more and more recently is, you know, we see new companies or entities springing up, or you see banks uh, becoming more and more involved in the oil and gas industry. One of the things I want to caution landowners. You know, okay, I'm an attorney. All right, that's what I do. So that's part of it. That's just a fact part of it. However, as an attorney, what do I do? I offer legal advice to my clients. My clients come to me and I give them legal advice. This isn't because I'm an attorney trying to get work for attorneys. If you're looking online or you're talking to somebody who's going to assist you in oil and gas related matters or represent you, you need to ask them, hey, are you an attorney? Are you a licensed attorney in Pennsylvania? So you know who you're dealing with. But then also, and I heard this today, as I was coming in today to do the show, uh, I heard a commercial and it was talking about, it wasn't an oil and gas matter, but it was somebody, it was a, a company advertising to go online and the, I think it was to incorporate. But it, the point is, is they were saying that we don't offer legal advice. We don't offer legal advice. And okay, but remember, if you're asking an entity, a person, a bank, uh, some company to give you answers, legal answers, you need to understand, are they an attorney? Are they offering le you legal advice? Because if they're sitting there saying, we're not giving you any advice, well, you could be talking to your neighbor. 
You could be talking to anybody. I'm going to get back. I'm, a, I'm up against it, but I want to talk about this more because you need to understand when you have an attorney, there's a lot of different rules and things that are involved with having an attorney representing you and obligations they have. But when you are hiring some company or a bank to do something for you and they say, well, remember, we're not offering you any legal advice. Well, my question then becomes, well, what in the world are you doing? Why am I talking to you if what you're telling me is, hey, I'm telling you this information, but essentially you can't really rely on it because we're not giving you any legal advice. I'm going to be back right after this break. This is All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark, here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m., and I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. And I want to, I want to explain some more of this because I, I really don't want this to come off the wrong way. Uh, but I think it's very important. And again, this isn't to be as a commercial for me or necessarily for attorneys, but here's the reality of it. If you're in a negotiation for an oil and gas lease, for a pipeline right-of-way agreement, for, if you're about to sign or you're being asked to sign any document, why, if you have questions or if you need some assistance, why would you go to somebody who can't offer you legal advice who's saying to you this is not legal advice well what is it because if I have a problem and I come back to you later and I say well geez you didn't tell me this or you didn't tell me that or I didn't understand this or that and they say well hey remember you signed this we were not giving you and did not give you any legal advice well what did you do why did I give you money? Why did I pay you? Why do we talk? What is going on here? You do not you do not offer legal advice, then why do I need you? So if you have questions about how a lease is going to operate, how royalties are going to work, what these terms mean, interpretation of agreements, understanding maybe there's some things that I could do to get more money, sometimes significantly more money, or better legal terms. How are these terms and words in this agreement going to affect me in the future? Well, the bank or this entity says, we don't offer legal advice, but they're probably going to try to answer some of these questions, but on what basis? How much have they studied oil and gas law? And if I have a problem and I need to come back to you, what are you going to do about it? And you say to me, well, we don't offer legal advice. Remember that? Well, if it's me and I'm negotiating or I'm involved in these contracts, I'm going to sign a contract and this is a major industrial contract. Make no mistake about it. These are major legal contracts and agreements that landowners are going to be asked or being asked to enter into and they may last for many decades and even a century or more. So why would you not want to get legal advice? If you're going to get advice, why would it not be legal advice as opposed to some bank or newly formed entity that says, oh, yeah, you know, please know that we're not offering you legal advice? Well, maybe that works if you're going to go on and you're going to fill online, you're going to fill out some form to start some sort of corporation, and they say, well, we don't offer legal advice, here's the forms. All right, maybe that works for you. I mean, I wouldn't do it, but maybe that works for you, but... That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about complicated agreements, oil and gas leases, pipeline agreements. We're talking about complicated royalty issues. And who are we going to ask to handle that? The guy at the bank? The lady at the bank? Some new entity that's formed because people say, okay, here's an opportunity and let's go ahead and we'll start some company and we'll review uh, we'll review royalty statements and we'll tell landowners, hey, you need us. But by the way, we're not offering you legal advice. Well, what the heck are you doing then? Why do I need you? What do you do for me that a lawyer wouldn't do for me? What is the benefit for me having you and what if there's a problem in the future? I've seen this recently more and more, and what kind of started me on this too, like I said, I heard something this morning, but over this past week, actually past two weeks, I had a client where they just entered into an oil and gas lease, and it was for a lot of money. 
and they were up right against the end and they just barely got in. And the reality was, is that there was this local bank that was representing, you know, supposedly representing these landowners in negotiations with the company. Again, I don't know how exactly this was occurring, but this is my understanding. I wasn't involved in this, but somehow this bank was involved. Well, rumor has it that the gas company, uh, for some reason, said okay well this landowner is not interested in leasing and apparently you know my clients believe that that was a representation made by this bank well what ends up happening is is that other people sign leases this landowner and client of mine ultimately well they ultimately did but didn't sign a lease at the time but reaches back out to the company and says hey uh we're interested in leasing and ends up getting this lease done and ends up getting very good terms and a very good lease but Somehow in this process, there was some strong confusion, which led to a company believing that they weren't interested. And somehow this bank was involved. So how does this, you know, what was this bank doing? How does a bank negotiate an oil and gas lease and say, we don't offer legal advice? The oil and gas lease is a contract. When you go through, and we go through these oil and gas leases with the client, when I do, we go through any term, each and every term. We go through every single question the client may have and say, okay, well, what does this language mean? When you explain what language means, are you not offering legal advice? So if I say, okay, here's what this means, but by the way, that's not legal advice. Well, what is it then? But then, okay, so maybe we're going to say it's not legal advice, but what did you just do? So you're telling me, here's an answer, but by the way, you can't rely on it. Uh, it's just an answer. So why am I dealing with you? Why am I dealing with you if you're saying I can't stand behind whatever advice I'm giving to you? So what kind of advice is it? Friend advice? People, please be careful that you're getting good quality advice that somebody is standing behind. I'm very concerned about that. I am Attorney Doug Clark. This is All Things Marcellus. I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. And you know, one of the things, too, here's another thing. Well, I'm on a roll on this. Um, another, And I, I did a section on the new website. I'll get another plug here. Uh, check out pagasleaseattorney.com, pagasleaseattorney.com, just this past Monday, uh, up and live, very excited about it, brand new, revamped, uh, very excited about it. Check it out. You got to check it out. PAGasleaseAttorney.com. Okay. As I'm doing this, you know, and we're going through and indicating all the different areas where I represent landowners, one of the things that I do are oil and gas lease royalty statement reviews. Oil and gas lease, or I shouldn't say oil and gas lease, oil and gas royalty statement reviews with the landowner. And it can be done in person, it can be done over the phone. It can be done with a lot of detail, even over the phone. But what do I typically do with this? Well, what we do is landowner sends me their gas lease, they send me their royalty statements, and then we can either sit down or we get a telephone conference, we can conference in as many people as we need to, and we go through the statements and we identify what the different numbers mean, uh, how they may apply to you, and explain the royalty statement. But what the goal is, is to educate you as the landowner as to what these different numbers mean, what to expect as you go forward, and to give you the tools as you move forward that you can review your own royalty statements. You do not, and understand them, you do not need to call me every month. You don't need to send me your royalty statements every month and pay me a fee to review your statements. And quite frankly, if you asked me to do that, I would tell you thank you, but no thank you. I'm not interested in providing that service to you. Why? Because I don't think you need it. I don't think you need it, and I'm not going to charge you for something that you don't need. But we start to see now as landowners are getting money and we see this with anything you know as people are starting to get more money and starting to get royalties people out there are saying okay how can we take advantage of this what can i do 
to benefit from the fact that all of these landowners are getting this money. Well, let me start this company. Let me go out there and preach that uh, landowners, you need to have these royalty statements reviewed, monitored. You need somebody to do all these things for you, and I'm the guy, or I'm the girl, I'm the company. You should send me all of your royalty statements. I'll you charge. I'll charge you a fee. I'll review them, we'll monitor them, and maybe we'll make some spreadsheets for you, whatever the case may be, and we'll give you a monthly bill, and we'll look at these statements. Do you need that? And in almost all cases, my opinion is the answer is no. What you need is, is you need to understand, you need to have the education and the tools to understand how to review your own statements. You don't necessarily need and almost never need a bank or some other entity to review and monitor your statements on a monthly basis. Now, if you have some anomaly, something weird occurs, you say, hey, uh, something strange happened. Send it in, talk to somebody, get it figured out because you had something unusual. But do you need to pay somebody each and every month to review and monitor your statements. The other thing is, I see this all the time in these advertisements, this implication that by sending your checks to these people, they're going to give you some kind of magical response as to whether you're getting uh, cheated on a monthly basis. Uh, you need us to make sure that the gas company isn't uh, cheating you and we're going to be the guys that are going to keep an eye on that and check that out. First off, I would ask them, well, what are you doing? Um, how are you doing that? What are you doing? Because the only way that I've seen, short of going and doing a detailed audit, which is a whole other animal, which is not what we're talking about here, but short of that, what are you doing, company? Well, an attorney could tell you, as I look at your lease, as I look at your royalty statement, I believe that the company is inappropriately taking deductions from your royalty statements for post-production costs, such as gathering, transportation, compression, and those type of items. An attorney tells you that and they say that I believe this to be true and the reason why is, is because I believe the company, in most cases, is breaching your contract. They are in legal violation of your contract, a breach of contract based upon my interpretation of the language in your contract, case law, and information, legal information that we have here to give you a legal opinion. If the bank says to you, oh, I think they're inappropriately taking deductions, is that a legal opinion, sir or ma'am? Are you offering me a legal opinion? And if that answer is no, then what kind of opinion are you offering me? Because you know what I need? I need to have a legal opinion as to whether a company is inappropriately taking deductions. That's what you need. You know, you could take it to your neighbor and essentially that's the same answer. So you can pay the guy at the bank, you could pay somebody, one of these entities to say, yes, uh, we think that this is wrong here or there, but then you say, well, is that a legal opinion? Well, no. You know what? I could take it to my neighbor, I could take it down to the diner, I could take it anywhere and get the same type of thing. I am Attorney Doug Clark, this is All Things Marcellus here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. and talking about you know, my concern where I think that there are, there are companies and entities out there that are looking to take advantage of the situation where you as a landowner get a royalty statement and you're confused. And, and I'll tell you, I can look at royalty statements. We can explain those to you. Uh, I still, you know, I get my cell phone bill and I'm still like, oh boy, I, mean, I got to, I just, it's, it's all foreign to me. Now, uh, if I wanted to, I'm sure I could go ahead and take all the time I needed and learn about it and figure it out. And But I just, I don't have that motivation because you know why? Because I'm so busy doing all these oil and gas issues. But the point is, once you understand your royalty statement and understand what to look for and understand what those numbers mean, what those columns mean, what those codes mean, well, 
Do you need somebody else to do that for you every month? Again, the answer in almost all cases is no. All right, I'm up against it again. You're listening to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm, here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. And I'm going to keep doing this. Another plug for the website. Go to pagasleysattorney.com, pagasleysattorney.com. Up on Monday, we revamped the whole site. And to me, it's a 100 times, if not even more than that, better than what it was. Check it out. Very proud of it and really encourage you. PAGasleaseAttorney.com. I'll be right back after this break. Welcome back to All Things Marcellus with me, Attorney Doug Clark of the Clark Law Firm. And I'm talking today about um, several things, but one of the things that concerns me, and it makes sense, I understand it. We see across Pennsylvania now a lot of landowners are transitioning into receiving royalties and we say, okay, these royalty statements are complicated and they are complex. And when you see one for the first time, it can look totally foreign and so difficult to understand. So then you go online and you say, oh, well, this company, uh, they monitor these statements. And, oh, yeah, I've heard about companies cheating landowners, so I better get somebody to keep an eye on that and make sure I'm getting paid honestly. Well, what I'm going to tell you is please be super careful about that. And what my belief and my personal opinion is, is that the landowner needs to understand their statement. No doubt about it. This is a major asset. You need to understand it. And we have found in many cases, now I say many because we deal with many cases, but it certainly isn't like common where there are errors or issues in these royalty statements because they're so automated. You know, there's just formulas and they're punching these numbers in. But we'll find some errors, and usually what it is, in almost all cases, it's a human error. Or you may have a claim for a breach of improper payment. But what is a company going to do when they make these promises about monitoring your statements or or making sure you're being paid properly, what are they really going to do? They're just gonna look at these numbers, record them, maybe they give you a spreadsheet, um, but what are they really going to do? Are they gonna offer you legal advice? Um, what are they gonna do? And what I'm seeing is, and my experience has been that, you know, I, I don't think that they're really offering landowners much of a service, but what they are offering them is a monthly bill. So you can pay money for them, to do something, the question is really, what are they doing? My belief is you need to understand your statements and you need to have the tools and education to do that. Commercial alert. For me, what I do is, is I do royalty statement reviews with landowners and usually, usually it's an hour, maybe two, um, usually. But what we do is we look at everything and we say, okay, here's what you have. Here's what these numbers mean. Here's, and you can add, you know, we go through any questions, things like that. Here's what you should just kind of keep an eye on. Uh, and then if you have any issues in the future or if something weird happens, if all of a sudden you're starting to see that maybe the gas company is recouping or taking back some of the money uh, for some reason and you have questions, well, then we can talk about it then. But do you need to send me each month your statements and me bill you for reviewing your statement? To me, the short answer is absolutely not. You don't need that. But what you do need is to understand your statement. So for maybe a couple hours, make sure that you're educated, understand it, and know what to look for. So if there's a problem or something unusual happens, you're aware and you're, you, know, you have the no knowledge to evaluate that and say, okay, hey, then maybe you need to check something out. But again, that's very, very unlikely. So I'm very concerned. I think landowners are out there getting taken advantage of because you see, okay, well, these statements are confusing. Uh, so therefore, we need to hire somebody because they're confusing. Well, no they're confusing we need to figure them out and you need to figure them out so you understand them and normally then you can just go ahead and keep looking at your statements you have the education and the tools to review evaluate and identify any problems i am attorney doug clark you're listening to all things marcellus 
I'm here every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. And we want to give landowners education and tools so you're thinking about the right things that you don't need to keep coming back if it's not necessary. We don't need to establish this lifetime relationship of royalty statement reviews. In very rare cases, is that something that you need? But many people are doing that. And then we come back to circle around saying, okay, entity, company, bank, whoever it is that's doing this, tell me this. How much is this going to cost me? And are you offering me legal advice? If the answer is no, then the question is, well, what are you doing? What are you offering me? And is this necessary? So please be very, very aware of that. Again, I'm attorney Doug Clark. You're listening to All Things Marcellus here every Sunday from 8 to 9. And going to jump back again, talk about the website. Like I said, we want to make sure that everybody's informed and educated. Revamped, re revised, it's essentially all new website. Check out pagasleaseattorney.com. Very excited about it. And I think it's a great resource whether you're looking to retain an attorney or not. It is a great resource. Check out the blogs, check out the testimonials if you're considering retaining retaining an attorney, if you're considering me, you're considering the Clark Law Firm, check that out. Very, very important because you need to be comfortable with whomever is representing you. You need to be comfortable. You need to be comfortable with their level of experience. You need to be comfortable that you can work with this person, obviously, you, you need to find this person credible and trustworthy and want you to check out the website. And again, whether you hire me or you don't hire me, uh, whether you're considering hiring somebody else, there's questions there to be asking, uh, biggest mistakes, a lot of great information. You got to check it out. Okay. You know, I've been doing this show now since August of 2010. And what we're doing too, we have that up on pagasleaseattorney.com. Also, I'm working on pipelineattorney.com, kind of our sister site, and probably in the next, I hate to make these promises, but I'm hoping maybe in the next month we'll have the new pipeline site up as well. Um, but you can go check out the radio shows, and we're, we're uploading them now because there's so many. <laughs> there's, I mean, we're, I don't know where we're at, but we're closing in like on 200 shows. We're closing in on it. We're not there yet. But that's 200 hours, closing in on 200 hours of radio shows. So no matter what you're interested in, there's a show out there for you. So you want to check that out as well so you get this information. But I caution everybody, and I mean this, before you put pen to paper on any agreement, before you put pen to paper on any agreement, you need to get legal advice by somebody with experience. You don't need to get banking advice. You don't need to get accounting advice. You need to get legal advice because if you have a problem and you turn around in another year, five years, whatever that time frame is, and you say, hey, bank, how come you didn't tell me this? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't I know about this? Well, hey, uh, Mr. Landowner, remember, we didn't offer legal advice. Well, what did you do for me? And I'm just, it's something that I'm seeing all the time, and it's just really got me upset. And I am Attorney Doug Clark. All right, and you're listening to All Things Marcellus here every Sunday from 8 to 9. Okay, another thing I want to talk about today is I'm going to talk generally, and I have sitting here in front of me like six different examples of what we call damage releases or they could simply be called a release. And what that is, is a legal document, a very, very important legal document. And what a release is, is that when you have, and usually it's a dispute, and let's put it, um, you know, a lot of times you'll see this if there was an automobile accident, if there was cars that were damaged, or God forbid, uh, a personal injury, that somebody was hurt in an accident. If there's a resolution or a settlement of any claims, maybe it was a claim for you know car damage, maybe it was a claim, again, God forbid, for personal injury, but if there's a claim and the two sides work out that claim and one side is going to get financial compensation 
in exchange for what's called a release. Again, the release being the legal document that the land, or excuse me, I'm so used to the lander, that the one party who is going to be receiving the financial compensation and potentially some other benefits, they're going to have to sign a release, a release document that says, and make this simple, that in exchange for this amount of money and maybe some other benefits, you agree to release the other side from any further future liability, meaning. So if I was in a car accident and say I hurt my arm and I got a payment, we'll make this simple, say I got a payment of $20,000 because I hurt my arm and maybe it was pretty bad and I was out of work for a little while and so I get a payment for $20,000. Well, they're gonna, well, they offer me a payment of $20,000 and they say, well, in exchange for giving you this money, we need you to sign this document and that document is a release agreement. And what does that release say? In essence, what that release would say would be, in exchange for giving you this $20,000, you agree that this is over, that you are releasing us from any and all future liability. You can't come back, and it'll say like whether known or unknown. So you can't come back to me as the other side in a year, two years, five years and say, well, you know what? Uh, yeah, my arm was hurt and I took the $20,000, but I didn't realize that I also had a shoulder injury or I didn't realize also that maybe that my neck was hurt as well. No, when you sign that release, you take the money, you sign the release in these, this example, you're giving up every possible future claim. So you know what's going on. So you better know when you're entering into this release you better know this. You better know that, hey, look, you can't come back and say, well, something else was hurting me too, and I didn't even, maybe you didn't even realize it, and say, I didn't realize it, or I didn't think about this, and it wasn't hurting me at the time, but I signed this release. Well, it's over. You can't raise that claim again. So, if think about that. If you're an insurance company, or you're, you're on the other side, and somebody is hurt, you may say, all right, listen, let's get them to sign this release right away because maybe there are some other issues that they are unaware of. So when you're going to sign a release form, you need to understand what it says and what you're doing and make sure that you realize that in almost all cases, especially in my current example, it's over. Whatever you're getting is going to be everything and you can't come back in the future and say, well, I have some other problems. Uh, they didn't materialize at that time, but now I realize that I had a, a shoulder injury as well, but I didn't understand it at the time, so I want you to give me some more money or I need to get physical therapy, whatever the case may be. So you need to be careful when signing a release. Well, same thing applies with these gas company cases and pipeline company cases, that you're not talking, hopefully, very much hopefully, about personal injury, but you're talking about property damage, like timber damage, other property damage, maybe even soil contamination, rare but possible. So there's a lot of other, uh, there, there's a lot of potential damages uh, that you could be releasing a company from. Sometimes the company goes and accidentally operates in the wrong area. Um, sometimes the company operates outside of the area that they're supposed to operate in. Sometimes landowners will agree to a payment for damages and not realize that the company, well, at the time, they'll sign it beforehand, and then later on, the company comes in and clears out more than what the landowner thought or stays there longer uh, than the landowner thought, which may impact their, uh, their crops if they're a farmer, and didn't, they weren't thinking about that. So you need to be thinking about if you're ever, ever going to sign a damage release or a release, you need to speak with an attorney. You need to understand what you're releasing. As with the gas leases, as with the pipeline agreements, as with the easement documents, the surface use agreements, all contracts presented to you are drafted by the company, typically by very intelligent and experienced company lawyers. They are drafted to, and with regard to releases, they want to be as broad 
as possible so you're releasing any ability to make any claim for damages or other losses in the future which hey may not be the end of the world but think about this maybe you're being asked to sign this before they even operate on your property which many times you are so does it make sense that you're gonna sign this very broad release to release a company from any and all future claims for damages in exchange for a certain amount of money today before the company even operates on your property you gotta be careful and you need to understand these things way over again you know I keep I'm gonna have to quit saying it let's just assume I'm gonna run over every segment you're listening to attorney Doug Clark this is all things Marcellus I'm gonna be right back after this break welcome back to all things Marcellus with me attorney Doug Clark of the Clark law firm in this last segment I was talking about damage releases or releases and I'm not gonna have the time I have like I said I can hear you I'm not lying here is a bunch of releases I have in front of me uh, don't have the time to get into them today but I will get into these in other shows but my point today is we want to and I want to keep everybody up to speed I have clients with leases but we're doing more and more with surface development well sites pipelines compressors meter sites launchers receivers all these different surface roadway activity well with these activity comes or the activities come surface damages impact to the surface of the property companies are presenting landowners across the state routinely routinely over broad release agreements documents where the landowner is giving up any and all current claims and future claims and in many many cases you're giving up all of these potential claims before the operations are even occurring on your property a very common issue is landowners asked to sign this release and the operations have yet to even occur occur in the property the landowners told okay here's where we're gonna operate here's what we're gonna do but you're releasing them as the landowner for all damages anywhere they may occur regardless of where these operations actually occur you need to be careful too are you releasing them in the event that there is some sort of environmental issue if there is some sort of contamination if there's a water contamination issue if there's a soil contamination issue are you also releasing or giving up your ability to make a claim against the company to fix it or to compensate you for losses that you may incur are you possibly giving up claims for any type of personal injury that may occur are you doing that and maybe you're not but maybe you are you need to really understand damage releases as I said I will talk about these in more detail and go through some and some samples in future shows but I'm holding here several of them where I've changed or we've changed I've changed I guess drastically from what the release document that was offered to the landowner because it was way too broad and required them to give up everything under the Sun which was not appropriate and what's funny is is the company will almost always and actually I don't think I've had a case ever yet where the company has not modified or changed the wording and the language in the damage release when requested to do so now do they agree to every single thing eh, obviously most cases no but do they agree in some cases they do but do they agree to change it so it's actually appropriate for what should be released or given up in that particular case very very important because as time is going on here we're seeing more and more surface development and landowners are being asked to sign more and more release documents a big area right now release documents are very important they're very big areas a hot topic now and you need to be careful what you're releasing some of these I read them and I believe I say to myself wow I can't believe that any landowner would ever even sign this but a lot of times people just go ahead and sign whatever's put in and put in front of them and of course that can really come back to bite you I'm not here to deceive anyone in any way 
In a lot of cases, there may not be any problems whatsoever. But in some cases, when there's a problem, it can be an enormous problem. And you need to guard for that. You need to watch out for that. I'm doing a lot more work with landowners who are having future issues, like reclamation hasn't been performed properly, that the company leaves and the property is a mess, uh, and they didn't do what they were supposed to do. They didn't put in gates. They didn't clear stones. They didn't clear uh, timber and brush and stumps. So we're going out, and we're, or I'm representing landowners to get this corrected. Well, in some of these release documents, you give up any claims for reclamation issues you know you got to watch out for these things you need to be careful you do not need to have and should not have your property left in a mess or a terrible condition you need to be mindful of these things whenever you're being asked to sign any type of release you know it just it probably seems to most people and it seems very difficult to even understand how a landowner is asked to sign a damage release document to release a company from damages and now it can be it certainly can be appropriate but it has to be done the right way but to release a company from damages as a result of operations that have yet to even occur on the landowner's property again being asked to release the the company from damages to your property before they even set foot on your property. Can you do it? Yeah, you can do it, but it needs to be done the right way. It cannot be overly broad. It needs to be tightened up and it needs to be done the right way. I am attorney Doug Clark. You're listening to all things Marcellus here every Sunday from eight to nine. And I'm going to finish up here with a little bit more about the show and the website. I've been doing a radio show since August of 2010. And we have the show we've been starting for over the last year. I'm not sure what the date was we started. But shows on every Sunday from 8 to 9 a.m. on these stations. However, say you can't make it. Or maybe you're not in the range of these stations. What you can do is go check out YouTube we're putting the shows up, making them available. Go check out YouTube. Uh, we're putting them up typically on Monday morning. It's Katie's first job here when she comes in on Monday morning. Get up the radio shows from the last week so you can go listen to the radio show on YouTube. Uh, so we want to keep it current and we want to keep it fresh. Also, go to pagasleaseattorney.com and you can access the radio show through the website. Very important keep on top of things and what I'm working on is is to do these uh, kind of like indexes to let you know hey this is what the shows about so this shows about damage releases a lot of it this shows about be careful about people who are offering to provide you services but saying hey these aren't legal services which may not be necessarily a bad thing but if you need a legal service the person who's giving you a service should be give, giving you legal services so you know I'm not out there providing medical services I'm not out there providing mechanic services uh, I'm providing a legal service so I'm gonna explain to you legally what these documents mean I'm gonna give you my opinion I'm gonna use my legal experience to do the best that I can for you I'm not gonna provide you banking uh, advice so why would the bank provide you legal advice I'm just very concerned about that. I'm very concerned, but if you're comfortable with it, hey, you can do that, but just think about that. Think about being in a position where you need legal advice and the person that's assisting you tells you, well, nothing I say to you is legal advice. And when you're gonna sign these contracts because they'll want you to sign, because they wanna document, they want to document, I told this person, I'm not giving them legal advice. We as a bank, told the client we're not giving you legal advice sign here says nothing we're doing is legal advice think about that think about that makes me nervous okay i'm up against it you're listening to all things marcellus with me attorney doug clark of the clark law firm check out pagasleaseattorney.com pagasleaseattorney.com we love the site hope you do too have a great week everyone